everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Joni Young here. Thanks so much for joining me today for this special painting tutorial. It's a quick one, but it's a uh, real time and a full length tutorial. So I've got a black primed canvas, an 8x10 smaller canvas today. I just painted a white canvas using Mars black paint. And I've got the following colors, phthalo blue, turquoise, bright aqua green, and light blue violet at the top there. I'm going to be adding a little bit of white and a few other colors as we progress throughout this tutorial and video and I'll be sure to mention them as I do and also in a full list below the video in the description box. I've got a small filbert brush here in number four because I'm working on a really small canvas and I'm just starting off with that light blue violet at the top gently brushing back and forth and not too too far towards the left or the right. I'm keeping it kind of in a rectangle shape and then it'll turn into an oval that you'll see later on. I'm working down into the turquoise and then the phthalo blue, bringing some of that phthalo back up into the turquoise and softly kind of blending them together so we get a little bit of a gradation there. Now in between you notice there's a gap with the black showing. I left that gap there purposely so that I could create a bit of a sunset or a sunrise look to this area using some titanium white and some neon orange. Now I've also got a little bit of metallic gold that I added to it in hopes that it would create and leave a, a slight shimmer. Um, but because the titanium white is opaque and not transparent, um, I'm not able to get that metallic shimmer, but I'm going to be using some of that metallic gold later on for the little uh, stars and gold bits uh, around the cloud uh, slash cave. And I say slash cave because it started out to be in, in my mind, I was envisioning a cave for this intuitive painting. I'm just painting on the spot here without any idea of beforehand what it was going to be. But as I was painting, I was picturing and imagining being inside of a cave and looking out and seeing this gorgeous view of this uh, seascape. Um, but you'll see later on that it starts to kind of take on um, a look of being in the clouds. So I'm interested in seeing how you guys interpret this and what your views on it are and how you see it. Now I just added a touch of cobalt blue light hue to the top of my light blue violet. Just a hint there with a clean brush. I'm going in and taking some of my Neon Rose by Holbein, and um, this color is exquisite, isn't it? It's just so, so beautiful. It's right up there with my top favorite colors. The f my all-time favorite color, though, is the Neon Purple Violet. As you guys know, if you've been following me for a while, you know that's my favorite color. Um, speaking of that color, I've been out for a while. They've been out of stock, so I'm hoping, crossing my fingers, that I can get a few more tubes and begin to add that color again to my tutorials. But for now, this one will do. It's very close, and it looks quite lovely um, over top, as you can see here, because it's a transparent, luminous color. The luminosity is um, really, really nice, and it layers over and filters over just wonderful with uh, all these colors here actually. Um, that gives it just this magical look and this glow that I love and I, that's what really really makes me um, want to use these colors because it's exciting. You create uh, just that instant pop and it's satisfying to use them. So now I've picked up some of my neon pink, my luminous pink by the same brand, the Holbein. There's a link below if you want to check out, check them out. You can buy them at fine art stores. Uh, most fine art stores carry them. Not too many um, craft stores do. Uh, some of you in the States, I have a lot of you viewers and patrons in the States, um, uh, you guys have mentioned that you can get them at some of your craft stores and uh, chain stores there in the States, and they're a lot cheaper than they are here, but um, you can get them on Amazon too. So I'm just taking a little bit more of that neon orange white with a little bit of pink in here, softening that center, the horizon area up just above the waterline there. And I'm going to even add a little bit of my neon yellow uh, warm. It kind of looks like a marigold color. It's really pretty mixed with a bit of white uh, and pink. And then I'm going to add a little bit of it along the horizon and kind of off on a diagonal angle, sweeping up. As you can see right here, I've loaded my same brush I'm using. And again, this is the neon yellow warm with a little bit of white, very little pressure, and just adding a little bit of it, a little bit of it uh, grazing over that pink and the horizon. And then I'm gonna add a little reflection 
in the water right below and you'll see how I do that. I'm just going to gently um, lightly pull and flick down and then back and forth to create some little reflections and ripples in the water as well as the highlights. Um, what I like to do for that is get a little bit of water on my brush. So what you don't see here is me um, just loading my brush up again and getting a little bit of water on it. When I say a little bit of water, a lot of you guys are wondering what that means. Well, if you have a drippy paintbrush, it means you have too much. <laughs> And if you're not able to achieve this brush stroke easily here and you feel like you need to press really hard, then that means you don't have enough water. So it's hard to tell you the, the exact amount of water I'm using. It just is something you guys have to practice on your own and you'll, you'll just kind of learn it along the way. You'll get a feel for how much water you need uh, depending on it all. And it all depends on the canvas you're using, the humidity in your room, you know, if it's too hot or too cold, all of that plays a part. The canvas, the paint, the brushes, and the speed of how, how quickly you're using it. So it's a lot, there's a lot more that goes into it than just how much water you're using. Um, and they all work together. Sometimes it's not just one thing, it's a few different things. So I'm just adding a little bit more of that beautiful neon rose, mostly just because I enjoy it so much that I wanted to add some more. I love that, just that instant pop of color makes me happy, makes me feel good. And I think it looks really pretty with the turquoise and the blue here, and then just a little bit over that pink. Uh, and with that black background, now I normally don't like to have a lot of black in my paintings, um, but sometimes it just works. And for this painting, it really works. And I even think if you just left it like this at this stage, it would be beautiful and magical. Sometimes less is more, but I'm going to show you guys more in this painting because I want you guys to learn the most you can. And I like to show you as many different brush strokes, techniques, um, and repeat it a lot. So this next step coming up, you're going to see me repeat it a lot and you're going to uh, learn how to apply the brush and get that technique down. So watch how I'm put, holding my brush. And here I've just got the blue and pink and rose. Um, or just, you just need a little bit of phthalo blue and that neon rose is even good enough. But if you don't have a neon rose, use neon pink. Um, and any blue will do. If you don't have phthalo blue, you can use cobalt blue. Um, and I'm just gently tapping with my one inch oval mop brush. I did not get this brush wet to start. That's really important to know. Do not get these mop brushes wet for, for this type of technique. It'll ruin the shape of the brush and your, and, um, the, you, you really don't want to squish it. Otherwise you're not going to be doing any, be able to do anything with it. So the reason why I like these brushes is because they give that fluffy textured look. It's just like perfect for foliage and um, soft mossy looks or little uh, flower bushes. Um, so once I apply the first coat over that dried black background, I pick up a little bit of white and look at this glow. I mean, it's just so, so pretty, right? The light that you, you get instantly, the feeling of light, like you're inside something and it's glowing. There's that soft glowing light. And you could even just leave it at this stage too. I said that before adding all this and it was pretty before. It's pretty like this if you want to leave it just like this. Sometimes having a darker outer edge is even more dramatic. Um, but I'm having fun with color as I always do. So, and I probably poured out a little bit more paint than um, I should have and I needed. Um, I'm used to working on larger canvases. So I've got a whole bunch of these 8 by 10s and I want to use them. And you can still learn a lot in a small painting like this. And whatever I'm doing here, you can take this to a larger canvas, okay? So don't think that you, uh, it's anything is different if you're working on a larger canvas. The only thing different is um, you could go up a few sizes in your brushes and you're going to need more time because it's going to take longer to cover a larger canvas and you're probably going to need a little bit more paint. Uh, other than that, it's exact same thing, same color, same technique, same brushes, maybe just a little bit bigger, like I mentioned. So I'm just going to keep adding those same colors and then a little bit of highlights by mixing a little bit of that titanium white. And I have not washed my brush out once because I'm using all the same colors. And if I at any point have too much paint in my brush, then I'm just going to you know, wipe the excess off on a towel, but I'm not getting it wet. I'm not washing it off in the water because it's going to ruin the shape. I also recommend having a few of these brushes. I recommend having a few of the same of 
all your brushes, especially your favorite, your go-tos like fan brush, you know, uh, these mop brushes, uh, filbert brushes. Uh, that way you've always got a clean and dry one ready to go when you need to have a dry one. So there's, there's certain things that you're going to need dry brushes for that haven't been washed out and don't have any moisture in them. Just dry with a little bit of paint. So especially the mop brushes, any kind of mop brush like the one I'm using or a round one or an angle one because I have quite a few of them, you know, those stipple brushes, uh, they work best when they haven't been dunked in the water. And <laughs> you'll, you'll know what I mean if you've ever done it. You just can't do anything with it after because that shape, that soft fluffy shape is just gone. Of course, I have to come in here and add a staircase, right? That's kind of my thing. I love a staircase. I love inviting um, viewers into these little magical fantasy escapes that I create. And for me, it's just it's just a thing for me. I love it. I think staircases represent so much. Um, but anyways, I'm using my filbert brush. You could use a flat brush for this. You're going to get um, even straighter um, stairs, you know, if you use a flat brush, especially if you're a beginner. With a filbert brush, they're going to have a little bit of a roundness to them. So that's fine for me. I don't, I want it to feel like they're kind of a stone staircase. And cut, so they're going to be kind of lopsided and misshapen. So you can definitely get away with uh doing a staircase like this with a filbert brush and I'm just using the same filbert brush I was using before with any one of these colors I happen to be using my blue and rose and pink with a little bit of white so that they show up I'll be adding a, a lighter and brighter highlight possibly um, some darker shadows to help build up more contrast and make it look more 3d after and then right back with my neon rose, uh, I'm going to add a little bit more to the foliage inside of here. I'm calling mine a cave. You guys may see clouds, whatever it is that uh, you see. I want to know. I want you guys to, to post it in the comments below because I find it really interesting. I, a lot of you guys will see certain things that I, I don't see and uh, I just think it's so fun to see everything um, that you guys uh, are seeing in my paintings that I never intended to be there. I think art is really special and kind of um, magical that way. It's a fun thing to do. So especially when I'm just kind of painting here on the spot intuitively, I don't know what's making me paint when I paint. I'm just being led by color, my brush, and kind of in a trance when I paint. I know a lot of you guys paint like that too. Many of you aren't that, you know, you're complaining and worried that you're not going to be able to get to that stage of painting. It comes with time and practice and um, being comfortable, being relaxed, learning to kind of just, uh, it's like meditating, I guess. I don't meditate, but I think this is the closest thing to meditation for me. Okay, so I've got another filbert brush here. Um, this is one of my newer brushes. I haven't been using it very much, so I thought I would give it a try, and I like it. My other, it's just as it's just as good as my other filbert brushes. Um, if I remember to leave a link below for these, I think to be honest, I just got a package of these at Walmart one day to try them out, um, and the bristles haven't fallen out. They're great. I'm just adding some highlights and then another layer of my phthalo blue down here at the bottom. Um, I like adding layers of colors like this that are transparent as a filter once the layer underneath has dried. So it's just another way to build up so much depth and create uh, a few other colors and shades. And it's really easy. This is beginner friendly. And if you guys want to learn more about um, adding filters or glazing, um, I've got a ton of videos and tutorials here on my channel. I'm getting up there in my videos. I've And I'm celebrating my fourth year of being on YouTube this summer, this July 2022. It'll be four years. Um, but I've got uh, close to 700 tutorials here and a ton more that you won't ever get to see here on my channel on Patreon. So if you would believe in what I do and would like to help support my video making and my art, head over and become a patron today. I totally appreciate it. And there's lots of wonderful tutorials there, longer ones as well, exclusive ones that you won't see here, and you have a chance to win one of my mini original paintings each month. So go ahead and check that out. There's a link below for that. So I'm just going to add a little bit more down here at the bottom. I decided to take a little bit out of uh, the turquoise and the blue and, and a little bit of that neon yellow warm and make it look like um, some water down there. And then I toned it and wiped a little bit away, like just blended it out a little bit. So there's just a hint of it showing, 
but I wanted to keep it a little bit more subdued down there and concentrate on just the focal point in this painting, which is the center. So everything kind of just drawing our eye into the center, which is the staircase leading into that pretty seascape window. And just those subtle highlights around everything around in the cave, not nothing too bright. Don't overdo the highlights. Less is more definitely, especially when you want to just have one focal point. And it's important to think about that when you're working on a painting if you're just using your imagination um, or if you're working from a photograph choose one specific thing that you want to focus on and make everything else a little bit more subdued and less detailed um, and less in focus so everything else can be just a little bit blurry um, and not as detailed so this is what I've done here is create a darker outside uh, gradually getting lighter until our eyes go right to the center there. You can see I just took a few seconds there to quickly dry this off. Didn't take long. It's a small canvas and it's quite warm in my studio today. I've got a little flat brush now from that same set of brushes that I got at Walmart. I've got white, neon yellow warm, and a little bit of water. And this is the same as before when adding your reflections and highlights in the water. You've got to just um, practice with the amount of water you've got. Um, in your brush to achieve the type of sun rays that you want. You don't want them to be solid because they're very light. It's light filtering, right? So you want it to be see-through. You don't want it, your, your brush to be dripping. So not too much water and not too much paint. Um, and if you have to push really, really hard, then you've probably not got enough of either paint or water in your brush or one or the other so definitely take time to practice working on your sun rays if you're just a beginner and I've got I like to add sun rays that's one of the things as well as staircases in my painting so I've got so many videos and tutorials on how explaining really in depth how to create sun rays so have a look through if you can't find any just uh, pop a question below in the comments and I'll be able to find one for you and I'll leave a link there so I'm just taking a little bit extra white with a tiny bit of that neon yellow warm. And the neon yellow warm, I don't know if I mentioned, all the neons that I use always are from Holbein. I'm not sponsored or affiliated by them. I just like, I really love them and they're wonderful. So I always recommend them and tell you guys about all the supplies and share that with you. So just a little bit extra white there on the outer edge of that oval just to give it a, a nice a nicer light source of where those sun rays are coming from and then with a little liner brush a bit of my metallic gold paint and it's by Liquitex basics acrylic I just add little dots and dabs here and then I'm gonna go down on the bottom right and do the same thing I'm not trying to make a pattern just being really kind of sporadic a few of them are going to be a little bit bigger and I'm going to make a few of them look sparkling by adding a little uh, pull and flick on the top, the bottom and off to either side. This might take a little bit of the paint off inside as you do this and that's totally normal. You're just going to go back after you add the dot, you pull and flick your little lines here to make it look sparkling and then you can go back and add a little uh, final dot and dab inside each of them. Now, I recommend if you really want it to look nice and bright and sparkling, do your metallic gold first and then add a little dab of titanium white, even smaller than the first dab right in the inside because that's going to make it look even brighter. I think this is totally magical. I really like this one. This was so spur of the moment for me. Um, I just decided to come in my studio and paint in the evening, which I don't normally do. And <laughs> this is always the way it goes. It's when I have nothing planned, nothing in mind. Just squeeze out some paint that speaks to me, colors that are kind of calling me and, and just doing whatever comes to mind and, and going with it and not holding back. Those are always my best painting sessions. And I'm so happy I decided to hit record on my little phone here. I'm recording from my iPhone and share it with you guys. So if you guys appreciated this and you liked watching, learned something, if you enjoy my channel, please subscribe, leave a comment below and like this video. All of that really helps to put my videos out in the algorithm so more and more people like you can enjoy learning how to paint. So I'm just going to add a few more little um, lines here to give this a sparkle. These could be little jewels and gems in this cave. 
Uh, to me, that's what they are, if you're curious. I don't want to ruin it for anybody, though, because you guys may um, see stars and clouds. So for me, this is what it is. It's a little magical cave with some gold and maybe diamonds. I don't know. I just really kind of... I've been doing a series of caves lately, and I've got a, a neat one, a really big one with northern lights inside a cave with jewels and looking out at northern lights with, and it's also a seascape. So that is just for Patreon. You might want to go check that one out if you're into caves and anything that kind of uh, reminds you of the Goonies. If you're a Goonies fan, that was really on my mind and played a role in that painting. And I'm going to add just a little bit more of my neon rose here. This is probably the third time I've gone back for more of that neon rose. Um, right here on the top left, adding just a little bit, a little hint to those twinkling gems. And a little bit more on the far left. I've got just a couple more things here that I'm going to do before I finish up this painting. And I, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this one. I'm going to add just a little bit more using a filbert brush, a few highlights, very delicate, not a lot of white, just enough to make that stand out and look a little bit more 3D. There's just a soft amount of light coming in right down here. Remember, the main light is coming from those sun rays, so that's where you want your brightest highlights to be. Um, and uh, this is all done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I sure am glad I got to share it with you. I had a lot of fun painting it. Feel free to paint along, share it with your painting groups, and have fun. I'll see you guys soon in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, everybody.